So let's consider. I'm going to just fill in over here. Let's consider n equals 3. Okay? Hmm. Now, for reasons that will become clear in a minute, I'm going to write this guy over here on the left hand side instead of the right hand side. So I'm going to go cos 3 theta plus i sine 3 theta right, is going to be equal to that guy on the left hand side cubed. Okay. Now the reason why I've written that part on the right hand side is because when we're doing our working in a second, all the business is going to be happening on the right hand side. The left hand side is just going to stay where it is. Okay. Now, this presents a new problem to us, right? In order to make progress here, we called on trig identities, right? And so we could substitute them all the way through. I want you to have a careful look at that thing on the right hand side, at the first corner of the whiteboard. What piece of knowledge do you have that allows you to make mincemeat of that expansion, just do it in one hit? Pascal's triangle, right? In Pascal's triangle, you've got all the binomial coefficients. And because this is a nice, easy one, right? It goes one, 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 two, one. What's the next one? One, three, three, one. Three, three, one. Okay, up to one, four, six, four, one, you should be able to just do straight off the top of your head. So let's have a go on this, right? What you're gonna have, this is A plus B all cubed. So this is our A and this is our B, okay? I'm gonna get one, three, three, one. 1, 3, 3, 1, and I just have varying powers of these. So the first one is going to be cos cubed theta. Do you agree with that? There's one of those. The next one, I've got three of them. Three of what? Cos squared, so that power climbs down. And then I get an I sine theta. Do you agree with that? I get one of those. Yep, so far so good. I've done one, I've done three. Now I should have another three. Three? Three of what? Cos theta. I'm just, I'm, I will get to negatives in a second, but I'm just doing the expansion straight out. Now I've got two of these, right? So that's going to be i squared, sine squared. Yeah, you with me? I've got one, and then three, and then three, and then one. One what? I cubed, sine cubed. Okay, cool. So you used binomial theorem to make mincemeat of that. That was great, that was easy. Now what can I do here? The thing we were going after, the thing we were going after was sine three theta. Right? Do you see that? Where is sine three theta in what I'm doing here? Sine three theta is the imaginary part of the left-hand side. Do you agree? So therefore, it should exactly line up with the imaginary part of the right hand side. So now my job is to take this, which is something of a mess at the moment, and sort out which are the real bits and which are the imaginary bits. Do you see that's where I'm going? That's my trajectory. Okay? So let's have a go. Tell me which are the real components first. We'll just gather them in one spot. Cos cubed. Right? Cos cubed is clearly a real part. What else is real? Looks like that is real, isn't it? Right? This has got an I in there and it can't cancel out. This has got too many eyes in there, okay, so it can't cancel out, but this is just gonna become minus one, right? Negative one. So let's write that. That's minus three cos theta sine squared theta. Do you agree? There's the real bit. Let's sort out the imaginary bit now. I'm gonna take out that factor of i, that'll make the comparison a bit easier in a second. I've already got this bit, right? Three cos squared sine. Does that look familiar? Three cos squared sine. Okay. So I'll write that down. There. And here, if I take out one of the i's, what's left behind? Minus. Two of them, which is minus one, right? So that means minus sine cubed. Huh. Does that look familiar? Okay, so we've just confirmed this result here without having to appeal to any of these guys over here. Did you notice that? Right? You didn't need to know any of this in order for this to emerge. Okay? So, what happens from here? Well, we can do a little bit of tidying up, right? In fact, what I'll do is, uh, we're going to do this separately in two pieces now. So, your next line will say, comparing the real and imaginary components. We pulled this trick out when we were doing square roots of... Um, complex numbers, if you recall that, okay? So we'll do the real bits first, real. Cos 3 theta over here on the left. I have lined up my 
parts here. Now, do you see this is a cosine? So I think I want to get all of these in cosines. Okay, that would just be a bit neater. So cos cubed minus three cos theta. What would you like me to replace with? I want to get rid of all the signs I can. One minus I'm going to replace with one minus cos squared. Okay, uh, tiny little bit of tidying up here. So this looks like it's uh, three cos theta plus three cos cubed theta. Does that look good? Four cos cubed theta minus three cos theta. And at this point, if I hadn't have done this earlier, I would have said imaginary part, sine three theta equals, etc. But you can see we've actually already done this. Like we did this 10 minutes ago. So we know we're gonna, we had this line, so we're gonna get to this line. So I'm gonna say that just to conclude. Okay, so there is the first, what are you doing here, all right? Complex numbers? <laughs> what does this have to do with complex numbers? Well, complex numbers have this way of reaching into everything. Um, so you can see, I have confirmed these results which are completely to do with real angles, and I've demonstrated using the more average theorem, okay? So that's pretty awesome. It's also nice that um, these two, the cos three theta, um, the triple angle results for both come out at the same time, right? And you can also see this really lovely symmetry between the cos result and the sine result. Do you see that? You see how they just kind of match nicely? Um, so that's kind of fancy, okay? One more thing before we leave off this, right? Do you remember the key piece of information that got you from here to here? What was it again? What was it? It was Pascal's triangle. It was binomial theorem giving you the binomial coefficients. Okay. Now, there's one other spot on the board right now where there are, there are binomial coefficients. You're just not used to spotting them that way. Do you see them? Yeah, look, we said, he, here are the, here's the binomial coefficients, right? Now, we just used this one because right, it was cubed, okay? But you just look at the previous row, which is about squaring, or as we would say, doubling the angles. Look, one, two, one. Why is that a minus sign? Why is that negative? Because there's an I squared there. There's an I squared. See, just like over here, right? So it's like, huh, complex numbers, they're there all along, right? It's quite amazing.